Hello and welcome to this episode of Apps TV. My name is Paul Lacey and today we're going to talk about how you actually measure the efficiency of a power supply on the bench. So I have before me a Tiny Switch 3 power supply. This is built around the Tiny 280 chip. It accepts a universal input, which means that it will accept AC volts from all the way from 85 volts up to 265 volts, so the entire spectrum, and it will supply 5 volts output at 20 watts. That's the typical spec that we're going to get for power supplies. So in order to calculate the total output current, we need to know that power is equal to volts times amps. So if we know that this is a 5 volt power supply supplying 20 watts, that means that full load current is going to be 20 watts divided by 5 volts, which is going to give us 4 amps. So this power supply is capable of supplying 4 amps at peak or at maximum load. Calculating efficiency is a pretty easy measurement because all we need to know is output power and input power. As we know, efficiency is equal to power out over power in. This essentially gives us a number describing how much power gets through the power supply to the output for how much power we put into the input. Or another way of looking at it is, it's a way of determining how much power is lost in the power conversion process versus how much power actually makes it out to the load. So in order to measure efficiency, all we need is three pieces of equipment. We're going to need a variac, or we're going to need some sort of an AC source. We're going to need a digital power meter, otherwise known as a watt meter. And we're going to use this to measure the AC input power that's coming into our circuit. And we're going to use an e-load to load our circuit to full load and measure the output power. OK, so let's give that a shot. So I'm going to hook my AC input up to the AC input terminals. I'm going to hook my e-load up across the output terminals so that I can load my power supply. I'm going to make sure my load is zeroed. I'm going to make sure my variac is zeroed. And I'm going to flip it on. I'm going to watch this watt meter as I bring the power supply up to make sure that nothing funny is going on. I should not see any load on the circuit until the power supply turns on at around 85 volts AC. And that's what we see. And let's measure the voltage here. 5 volts out. So that's beautiful. That's exactly what we were looking for. So 85 volts in, which is the lowest AC input voltage for this circuit. We're getting 5 volts out. I feel comfortable now loading this circuit to full load, and we can take this efficiency measurement. So I'm going to load this circuit to 4 amps. Now this power supply is operating at full load. Let's go ahead and calculate the efficiency. So power out is going to be amps times volts. So we know it's 4 amps, and let's measure the voltage. That's interesting. The voltage spec for this power supply is 5 volts plus or minus 5%. And as you know, 5% of 5 volts is 0.25 volts. So we're allowed to range anywhere between 4.75 volts and 5.25 volts. But we're reading 4.61 volts on this e-load. And that's a problem because if our power supply can't stay within the specified limits at full load, it's not a very good design. But let's deal with one problem at a time. So let's first calculate the efficiency, and then we'll see, see what's going on. We can calculate efficiency by power out over power in. Power out is going to be volts times amps. 4.61 volts times 4 amps, that's going to give me 18.44 watts out. And I'm going to read off this meter here on the AC power section. I'm reading 26.947 watts in. If I take 18.44 divided by 26.947, I get an efficiency of 68.4%. That's a little bit lower than I measured earlier today. So something is not right here with this setup. So why don't we go think about this for a second and try to figure out what's going on. So what went wrong with this measurement? Well, let's look at this here. This is the secondary side of our power supply, and these are our two output terminals. Now what we really wanted to know to know output power is we wanted to know the voltage across our term these terminals, and we wanted to know the current that's coming out of our power supply, and that will give us our output power. But we didn't measure the voltage right at the output terminals. Instead, we measured the voltage at our e-load which happened to be sitting over here on the bench. And we, l we connected it to this e-load with some very long leads. Now, do 
Do you see a problem with these very long leads? Well, each one of these leads has a small resistance associated with it. And as current flows through these leads, it's going to create a small voltage drop across these leads. Or as we saw in the lab, sometimes it's not even small. Sometimes it's significantly large. Large enough to make us think that our power supply is outside of regulation when it really isn't. So when we measure the voltage here, what we're actually measuring is we're measuring the voltage of the output terminals along with the voltage drop across these leads. So what do we need to do to fix this problem? Well, next time what we need to do is we need to actually measure the voltage across the output terminals. That way we're not measuring the voltage drop in the leads. We are only measuring the voltage that the supply is outputting at the output terminals. And then what we're also going to do next time is we're going to break this loop right here and we're going to put an ammeter in series with this so we can get a more accurate measurement of current. Because these e-loads are not precision current measurement instruments, the measurements of current that we're going to get off of this display are for rough calibration purposes only, but not for the kind of precision measurements that we're trying to make in the lab. So let's go and let's try this again with a couple new piece of, pieces of equipment and some more accurate measurements. I have taken the liberty of finding myself a couple of multimeters, which I'm going to use to measure voltage and current today. I have two different models of Fluke multimeters. I'm going to use the, the Fluke 77 multimeter and the Fluke 87 multimeter. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use the 77 multimeter to measure voltage. I'm going to use the 87 multimeter to measure current. And that's because the Fluke 87 multimeter has an extra digit of current resolution. That means that I'm going to get four digits for my current measurement, and that's going to give me a much more accurate measurement of efficiency when I calculate my output power. Okay, so let's go ahead and hook these up into the circuit here. Fluke 87 to measure current. Fluke 77 to measure voltage. Now I'm going to hook up my AC input. We are now ready to power this circuit up again and redo this measurement. So I'm going to make sure that my load is zeroed, my variac is zeroed. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to watch it as I bring it up. And the power supply starts up at 85 volts, and we're reading 5 volts. So let's go ahead and load this circuit. And I'm going to go ahead and watch my current meter when I'm loading the circuit this time. I'm going to load this to 4 amps. You'll notice that the voltage drops ever so slightly at high load, but not nearly as much as we were seeing when we look at the E-load. So let's look here. We're seeing... 4.97 volts when we measure the voltage across the output terminals and we're seeing 4.61 volts across the e-load that means there is 0.36 volts dropped in the in the cables that are carrying four amps of current okay so now let's go ahead and calculate efficiency with these new numbers the output power is 4.97 volts times 4 amps. That gives me 19.88 watts. I'm going to divide that by 26.947 watts coming in, and I'm going to get an efficiency of 73.8%. Now that's a lot closer to what I'm expecting. So now we can have confidence that we have the best efficiency measurement possible for this power supply. That's the correct way to measure efficiency. I'm Paul Lacey. You've been watching Apps TV.